Next, today we're watching venom extractions from black neck spitting cobras. These are Naja nigricola And these snakes are kind of interesting when we extract from them because they do inject venom through the membrane, but they also <laughs> can spray the venom as they bite. And this one here, when you uh, watch it bite the funnel, if you look closely, right there, you can see the venom streams on top of the parafilm. So that snake sprayed right before he bit. That's kind of an interesting behavior that we've noticed with some of the spitters that they do that. And it's kind of cool to be able to see it. Uh, you'll also notice that Jim is wearing long sleeves and he has a full face mask on. The reason for that is because these are spitters. That one didn't want to stop biting there. And you certainly don't want venom to get into your eyes or your mouth. Any sort of mucous membrane is not a good thing. But also, even exposure on the skin, it isn't going to hurt you if it just kind of randomly happened while you were hiking in Africa or something. But because we work with these animals all the time, Jim is trying to minimize his exposure to the venom as much as possible. So this way, if one happens to spray and get on his arm or uh, shoulder or whatever, it isn't going to be as likely to cause exposure to him. And it, it, that can really make it more likely to have uh, an anaphylactic or hypersensitivity reaction to the venom. Another thing that you'll notice is that we are using the tubes to restrain these snakes. And I think, you know, as time goes on, it seems like we're using tubes for more and more animals. And the biggest reason for that is it just helps to restrain them while being a little bit safer for Jim and also a little bit easier for the snake. It kind of prevents them from being able to twist and turn around uh, a whole lot. So it's just makes it a little better. Sorry, this bit of video was taken vertically, but it was such a good shot of the venom coming down. I wanted to, to leave it in there. Uh, these snakes have a reputation for being uh, willing to eat pretty much anything. They of course will eat mammals and, and we feed them rats here. But in the wild, they'll eat pretty much anything they can find. So that may be uh, mammals, it could be birds, it could be lizards or other snakes. Uh, they're really kind of generalists and they eat anything that presents itself to them. They're very strong snakes. You can see they're pretty big. Uh, they're quite muscular and very strong. So they're really able to uh, predate on quite a few things, even things that are large. Uh, they also have an interesting behavior where when they get scared, they will regurgitate their food. So you may know that vultures can do that, and uh, these guys actually will do that same thing. So we want to make sure that if we're going to be uh, cleaning their enclosures or caring for them, that they haven't had a meal too recently, because obviously we don't want them to eat. Bites from spitting cobras are not good. Uh, of course, they can cause human death, so that's clearly not a good thing but in addition the venom is very cytotoxic that's why it's a problem if it gets into the eyes okay. and if it's injected it can really cause a lot of necrosis and uh, loss of use or loss of the limb itself and that can be um, of course a challenge for anyone but especially a challenge if the person bitten is uh, farming or herding animals as they're primary means uh, to survive, they are, you know, not in a good shape if they have a loss like that. So, of course, antivenom is the only acceptable treatment for them, and some places that can be really difficult to find. So even though we refer to these as spitting cobras, it would be a lot more accurate to say spraying cobras. Because what happens is when the snake compresses the venom gland, which of course all venomous snakes do to, well, all of the front fanged venomous snakes do to inject their venom. Uh, when these guys squeeze the venom gland, 
it goes through the duct and into the fang exactly the same way it does in other venomous snakes. The biggest difference is that the venom comes out of the front of the fang as opposed to kind of the bottom. And the opening for the venom is very much more rounded and less like the opening of a hypodermic needle than in other venomous snakes. And that helps to project the venom forward. And they have excellent aim. They can hit a moving target uh, like 12 feet away. I might be slightly off on that number with near 100% accuracy. So it really is an incredible system that these guys have. If the venom does get in your eyes, it's extremely important to get it cleaned out as quickly as possible with something like a saline wash uh, or clean water if nothing else is available. There isn't much else you can do but try to get the venom out of the eyes as quickly as possible. Uh, it is possible for these to cause permanent blindness if the venom is left in the eyes for too long. So it's definitely not a joke and not something you want to risk getting into your eyes. Thank you all for joining us today, and we hope you have a great day. <laughs>